So are you looking for a new NVIDIA graphics card, but you have a hard time figuring out what the names actually mean? If so, you've come to the right place. The GT series are low-end GPUs and will likely run Minecraft or CSGO at above 60fps. However, given the price of these cards, it wouldn't be surprising if they even hardly ran those titles. As for the GTS series, it should be pretty obvious given their prices, but these are far from optimal for an enjoyable gaming experience. At the time of their release, they were technically gaming GPUs, but they are now fading into the unknown due to their age. To prove my point, I found a GTS 450 on eBay for approximately £35. Not to mention it was manufactured by Gainwood, a company that I and probably most of you have never even heard of before. If you are going for a gaming PC and want to be part of the green team, buy a GTX card. If you don't have enough of a budget, try and hold on to your sanity until you can afford one. But do not just buy any GTX card, you must pay attention to the 3 or 4 digit number that follows. So the first digit, or first two with Pascal, shows which architecture the GPU is using. The higher these one or two digits are, the more modern the architecture is. For example, the 900 series is based on Maxwell architecture, while the 1000 series is based on Pascal. This means with, with each generation of GPUs, the performance of other features will improve slightly. Now let's talk about the other two digits. It is really quite simply a performance and specification increase as they get higher. So for an example, the GTX 670 is more powerful than the GTX 660. With this in mind, don't make the same mistake I had at the time of me sticking my head into the world of computing. Don't assume that a GPU is more powerful just based off of their architecture alone. For example, a GTX 7070's performance is in between that of the 960 and 970. This proves that the architecture does in fact affect performance, but does not automatically make the more modern card better. The same could be said between the GTX 690 and the 960, as the 690 is effectively a dual GPU, and it is a very powerful one at that. It completely obliterates the 960, but despite it being like three generations behind. Now let's tackle the letters that sometimes appear after this and what they mean. The letter M is what is used after a GPU's name if it is a laptop graphics card. If, it, if a dedicated graphics card is inside your laptop, don't expect it to be as powerful as its desktop counterpart though, as it will have to compromise performance due to temperature and size constraints. In some cards you will notice it says TI, and this stands for titanium. This generally means that this version of the GPU has more shaders and usually sees a 15% increase in performance. Some cards generally say SC or SSC, and this will mean super clocked or super super clocked. And basically all that means is that the card is factory overclocked so you don't have to overclock it yourself. But where did the 800 series GPUs go? Well, 800 series GPUs do in fact exist, only they do not have desktop counterparts, not sure why, but don't expect to find an 800 series anywhere else other than a laptop. So I hope you did enjoy this uh, small video, and if you did, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and maybe even subscribe for more. Anyway guys, this is Duo from How to Compute, and I will catch you all next time. So we will see you then. Bye.